today in Rich in Relationship, we're going to talk about how to get your partner off your back about money. Financial nagging, if left unchecked, can become something very dangerous to a relationship. Relationships should be run like a business. A healthy business has more money coming in than it does having going out. Welcome to another episode of Rich in Relationship. I'm your host, Rich Heller, and today we're going to talk about how to get your partner off your back about money. This sounds like an odd topic, right? Not as odd as you might think, though. It's really easy to take the side of the person who wants to rein in spending in a family. We're all advised to be thrifty, after all. And sometimes the way that person expresses themselves or even the level of thrift that they're demanding may be out of context or come across as controlling to the person who's actually doing the spending. What we're talking about here is financial nagging, but really we're talking about more than financial nagging because financial nagging has many repercussions, fruits that it bears. It starts out as nagging, sort of picking at, and then it becomes criticism. And then the criticism becomes emotionally charged. And then the emotional charge can even turn into emotional abuse. Financial nagging, if left unchecked, can become something very dangerous to a relationship. And I'm not saying, by the way, that it's okay to spend more money than you have coming in, right? I'm a staunch believer that a relationship should be run like a business. A healthy business has more money coming in than it does having going out. It's storing away a profit. A healthy family is storing away a profit for the future generations. A healthy family is putting away money for uh, emergencies. A healthy family is putting away money for college funds. A healthy family is putting away money for... When the partners become, their metabolism starts to slow down and they become less generative, there's enough money so that they can continue to live in the lifestyle to which they've become accustomed, doing less work or maybe even no work, depending on what they want. In a healthy family, when the partners reach what we call at Rich in Relationship, the guardian stage, where they're helping their kids to launch their families, they have enough money set aside not only to take care of themselves, but to help their children with their start. They've got enough money put aside so that they can create a legacy for their grandchildren. Wow, that sounds lofty, right? That sounds like Rockefeller stuff. But truthfully, we can all accomplish that. It's really about how much money do we have coming in and how much money do we have going out? That's the whole nine yards. Or really, where is it going out, right? In real life, everything that comes in goes out. But where is it going out? Is it going out to get a more, better, different car, house, jewelry, clothing? Is it going out to go into a fund that will grow and accrue interest for retirement? Is it going into a fund that will help children? Is it going into an emergency fund? Is it going into stocks? Is it going into real estate? Uh, is it going into something that will increase the wealth? The difference is, are you spending it or are you investing it? All right. That was a big segue. Let's get back to the topic of what if you just got someone who won't get off your freaking back about your spending? And don't think for a second that I haven't experienced that. And so have so many other people. So you've got someone on your back about your spending. Question one, is your spending commensurate with what's coming in? Is it just that they feel that they're earning more money and that you shouldn't be spending it? Or are you actually spending more than you've agreed on? So the first way to reframe the money nagging on you is to start setting some boundaries. And your primary boundary is going to be, what is your spending plan for your family? That is the primary boundary. Right? You could say, if you're earning more and spending more, you could say, well, I'm earning more, so I'm spending more. But that's not a legit boundary. When you're in a partnership, 
All right. Everyone's contributing. Their, both partners are contributing their income. They're contributing their time. They're contributing their skills. They're contributing their heart. And it doesn't really matter if one person's out earning another, because in the end, in a partnership, you come in with different strengths and you're feeding in different strengths. If you reduce it down to I'm earning more so I can spend more, then you're breaking your partnership. The other partner might say, I'm loving more, so I get the kids closer to me. Ha, 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 ha. That's not what partnerships are founded on. All right, so the first boundary is, what is the spending plan, and how much should each of you be getting to spend on the house? How much should each of you be getting to spend on food? How much should each of you be getting to spend on vehicles, clothing, going out, movies, uh, whatever, or entertainment, let's just call it entertainment, um, how much should each of you get as mad money, money that you just spend on yourself to do whatever you like with, all right? If you don't have that kind of structure, I want you to consider it because without that financial boundary, you're defenseless. They can nag you all day long. An appropriate structure is that we have X percentage of money that goes to a roof over our head, rent or mortgage. We have X percentage of money that goes towards transportation and travel. We have X percentage of money that goes towards clothing. We have X percentage of money that goes towards food. We have X percentage of money that goes towards entertainment. We have X percentage of money that goes towards retirement. We have X percentage of money that goes into creating an emergency fund. We have X percentage of money that goes towards creating college money or school money for our kids. We have X percentage of money that goes towards savings, either in the form of investment or actually putting it in a bank, whatever appeals to you. That's the basic frame. You want to start with, if you are being criticized about your spending, you want to have that frame. Now, if you have that frame and you're spending outside of that frame, then maybe you either need to renegotiate the frame or take a look at your spending. However, taking a look at your spending is not going to stop them from nagging you. Let's be honest. When someone is a nag, they're a freaking nag. I know I have been that person. I have done the nagging. So once you have the frame and once you're... Spending is within the frame, then there's dealing with the nagging. But I want to be really clear before I go there. I want to emphasize something. It is super important, super important that you both have separate bank accounts where your spending, your personal spending money goes. Right? Uh, back in the day, the primary wage earner would bring home the money and hand it to the person who's managing the house. The person who's managing the house would put away money in different socks for all the things that I just talked about. And they put a little bit aside for themselves and for the primary, separately for the primary wage earner to just spend. It's like the primary wage earner had this. You go out and spend this, drink it, do whatever you want with it. And I have a little bit that I'm going to do what I want with. It is really important that you have separate accounts that that money goes into and that you, the, the, the first boundary is that you spend money on yourself out of that account, right? Because very often what happens is people feed money and all their money into a joint account or some of their money into a joint account and the mad money comes out of the joint account and the other person can see it and be critical about it. But if you have a spending plan set up, when you have a spending plan set up, where both of you get a certain amount every week to just spend on whatever you want to, whatever you want to, when you have this set up, there's nothing that the other person can say about your spending, what comes out of that account. That's your account. Or if they do say something, you can say, you know what? They came out of my, that's money I saved up in my mad money account. You, you really have no grounds for criticism. And if they keep going, all right, now let's get into what to do when someone won't shut up. The first thing you say is, hey, we have an agreement about this. I'm not going to talk about this with you. I'm done with this conversation. And if they start getting loud, you might want to go somewhere else. And if they're always loud, even when you have adequate arrangements, you might want to get some outside help. We've spent a lot of time at Rich in Relationship helping people with that kind of loudness. 
Now, I'm painting this as if you are super calm and they are super loud, but let's be honest. What happens is when they start nagging and pecking at you and getting loud is it triggers you. We feel triggered. We're triggered. Our button is pushed. Our emotions go from zero to 60 instead of zero to 10, and we get into the fight. The fight is one where I'm right and you're wrong. Hey, you know what? I took that money out of my Mad Money account. We have an agreement about this. I'm right and you're wrong. Leave me the frick alone. And they say, yeah, well, you know what? The, we didn't pay the electric bill on time, so maybe we're putting too much money in your Mad Money account. And, you know, I'm right and you're wrong. right? And then that fight just escalates. And it's an unwinnable fight. That energy of I'm right and you're wrong, of I'm going to win, you're going to lose on both sides, it's unwinnable. It's unwinnable because even when you win, if your partner loses, you lose. Your kids lose when you win at the expense of your partner. If one person wins and the partner loses consistently, that leads to a very unhappy marriage. If the winning is equal, that's unhappy but and frustrating and hurtful but not quite as painful as when one person has power domination, emotional power domination over the other. The impact of this kind of communication is tremendous. 76% of all marriages fight about money. 54% of all marriages end. All right, so having this fight, having this conflict and not resolving it when it could be done so easily is insanity. All right, it's doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Now, I worked with a couple who had this dynamic going on. And the first thing that the primary wage earner did uh, was cut off the spender. The spender went and got a credit card, credit cards, and the primary wage earner was on the hook for those credit cards. Finally, they came to a financial agreement uh, but the primary wage earner was so used to laying into his partner about this that even with the agreement, uh, if she would go over the line in some small way, he would just attack her vehemently. Uh, and she needed to create space eventually. She's, you know, what she did was she started going to her mom's house. You know, when he would go into this place, she'd just say, "Hey, I'm, I'm, go I'm taking the, I'm taking our daughter, and I'm going to my mom's house." I can't have her see us fight like this. And after she did that enough, uh, he realized that he really was crossing a line that he shouldn't be crossing, and they came to us for help. And the first thing we did was we taught them how to disengage from the fight, right? What to do to not have the fight, right? That helps with some of the problem, but the emotion is still there. We help them release some old emotions uh, about being cheated, about being bullied, about being picked on, um, that, that about uh, being at the mercy of another person, you know, on both sides. We help them release some emotion about that and create new strategies for managing this. And they now have a thriving financial partnership and emotional partnership, right? Like when the financial partnership comes into harmony very often, it's because the emotional partnership has come into harmony as well. Hey, and if you want to learn more about the techniques that we use with that couple, go to our website, richinrelationship.com. It's just like this podcast, Rich in Relationship, only it's richinrelationship.com. Um, there are free resources there. And we've got a masterclass coming up in September of 2024 that is all about how to end the fight. If you're watching this after September 2024, we'll probably ha have resources on the, probably, there will be resources on the website that will help you with the fight. Uh, and there's going to be resources on there about disengaging from the fight when it's particularly driven by money, which is very, very common. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like this podcast. Please subscribe, share it with your friends if you think it has value. Help us to grow this message. We're looking to influence, change, help 10,000 marriages in the next few years rebloom and rebirth their intimacy. Have a great day and thank you again for listening.